what is up hello why does that sound so familiar anyway my name is Sarah welcome back to the literary life so today I thought I would take you guys through the books that I have read recently my recent reads if you will so in the month of may i read eliza and her monsters by francesca zappia is about 18 year old eliza merck who online is known as lady constellation she is the anonymous creator of monstrous sea a super popular web comic a new boy shows up at her school and he happens to really love monstrous sea and he kind of tempts her to live her life more extravagantly and offline because she's very well delved into her online life and not really social she's kind of shy and then bit by bit all the things that she's kind of working for start to crumble as a result of him and yeah I gave this four out of five stars because I actually really liked it but there were just a few things that made me like huh that's Mm, you know, hmm. One thing is I wish Francesca Zappia spent either much more time building the background characters or no time at all. Because what I noticed is that she'd give us a tidbit of information on the background characters and then she wouldn't update it at all and then the book just kind of ended and I was like, why did you do that to me? Um. Also, something I noticed is that Eliza was kind of disrespectful to her parents. Was that just me? Like, all the people that have read this book, let me know. Because I just felt like if I did or said half of the things that Eliza does in this book, my parents would have backhanded me so quick. Like, none of that. Overall, though, the book was really well written. I sped through it. It was addicting. It was good. And I think it ended okay. I'm not too happy with the ending either. I just felt like certain characters caused other characters to do things. I'm trying to keep these spoiler free, but if you've read the book, I feel like you'll know what I'm talking about. So in June, I read the first book of the Grisha trilogy, which is Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo. Mm. People weren't joking when they said that compared to Six of Crows, the Grisha trilogy is like literally nothing it's nothing this book follows the orphaned elena starkov as she is taken in by the darkling to be his sort of protege because they believe that she is the sun summoner which is kind of like the only person that can destroy the fold which is like this dark area in the middle of the sea that just is filled with these crazy crazy monsters with like teeth and stuff I don't know. This book, just like its title, was extremely basic. It was just nothing new, nothing special. Everything was just kind of like your regular everyday chosen one book. Like it's literally called Shadow and Bone, which are like the top two most used words in the entire young adult titles dictionary. And it very much lived up to its basic name because nothing was new. It was all just, mm. the characters were just like boring and the protagonist mostly, she was so boring. I don't even, what did she even do? <laughs> like actually, what did she do? I don't remember it. I don't remember that book at all for the most part, except the beginning and the ending. All the middle stuff, I don't remember. I ended up giving this book two stars because I literally just couldn't be bothered. Um, I'm gonna stick to, you know, Six of Crows Crooked Kingdom, but I appreciate the offer from Miss Lee Bardugo. Um, I'm just not gonna take it. The next book I read in the month of June is Eliza and her Mm. The next book I read in the month of June is Girl Made of Stars by Ashley Herring Blake. This book follows Mara, who has a friend named Hannah, who basically accuses her twin brother Owen of raping her. So our main character, Mara, basically has no idea what to think because she doesn't want to think that her twin brother Owen is capable of doing such a thing, but she also doesn't want to think that her friend Hannah is capable of lying about such a thing. So I ended up giving this book a four out of five stars because there were a few tiny little things 
things that I felt like could have been done a little better. So when I first started reading this book, I felt so angry. Like you will not believe how furious I was at the main character Mara because she wasn't handling things the way that I would have handled things if I was in her position. So I kind of had to keep it together and avoid from chucking this book at the wall. And I kind of had to just like put away the things that I thought and the way I would have acted in this position and just kind of like get myself into the mentality of the character and put aside my own thoughts for a little while and I'm glad I did. My only major note is that I do wish that this book was told in multiple Multiple points of view and I'm not saying that Mara's point of view was boring or like not good enough or whatever it was but I constantly and this has never actually happened to me when reading a book but I constantly felt myself thinking what are all the other characters thinking what is he thinking what is she thinking how would they act in this position what the heck is going on you know what I mean like I just I kept wanting to be in everyone else's head and Mara too, but like everyone. I wanted to know what everyone is thinking and that's why I think this book would have really benefited off of being a multiple perspectives type of book because can you imagine that? Like seeing that type of situation, um, the context that it's in, in different, like all different points of view. I think that would have made the book a lot more difficult to write for Ashley Herring Blake, but I also think it would have made it a lot better, at least in my opinion. The next book I read was Adulthood is a Myth by Sarah Anderson. First of all, because her name is Sarah, so yes. And second of all, because I've always wanted to read these comics and I'm so glad that I got to read one of them and I hope to read the rest. So I gave this five stars because it was just one huge I relate. It's just filled with all this relatable content and things that I experience in my day to day life put in cute little quirky comics and adorable drawings and everything about it was just gorgeous and adorable and perfect. So five out of five stars. I plan to read all of her graphic novels slash comics. Next I read Broken Prince and Twisted Palace both by Aaron Watts who actually is two authors but they put themselves together to make the author Aaron Watts and I thought that was really cool because I always thought it was just like a random girl. Anyway, this is the second and the third book in the Royal series that I'm so obsessed with right now. Overall, these read like the best telenovelas ever because people were dying and then people were cheating and fights were happening and I was into it. It's just, it's so trashy in the best way possible, I promise. Then I read Fatal Throne, The Wives of Henry VIII Tell All. This book follows the wives of Henry the eighth um, and it's basically telling their life stories in the perspective of themselves. What really intrigued me about this one is that a different author writes every single perspective and I really liked it. I like how they still kind of were able to connect. It didn't feel disconnected. It was edited really well obviously. It took me about two pages to fall in love with this book and then I just marathoned all the way through. My favorite queens were Catherine of Aragon and Anne Boylan because they had a language aspect to their stories. Catherine of Aragon had Spanish and Anne had French and I really liked it. It made it so much more interesting and I would recommend this. I ended up giving it three stars because the rest of the stories just didn't do it for me like the first two did. Not that they weren't good, they just weren't bad either. They were just kind of like there, you know what I mean? But the first two knocked it out of the park for me. The next book I read in the month of July is Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Mikado, which... Ew. I'm gonna be so honest, I don't know what I was expecting going into this book. I think I was expecting too much, maybe that's why I was underwhelmed. Okay, so this book is about her body, like the female body, and just it contains a bunch of short stories about it, and I just... I just don't know, you know? Some of the short stories I really loved, like I really enjoyed fully, but then others I was like, what? What's happening? <laughs> What's actually going on here? I literally had to skip the entire Law and Order one because I just didn't understand what's going on. I've never watched the show. Like, I was so confused. She didn't put much context in most of the 
little paragraph thing so I was just like what's what's happening like what's what's actually going on also something to know is that I just felt like there was too much sex in this I don't know it was just like can you say that yeah I'm saying that because it was like why like what I don't know it was just okay that's why I gave it three stars it was just it was okay it was okay the next book I read is My Sister the Serial Killer by Oyin Kan Brightwaite. I hope I said her name right. This book is basically about a Nigerian woman whose younger sister just has this inconvenient tendency to kill her boyfriends. Yeah, I did receive this book from NetGalley, so it isn't out yet, but it does come out November 20th, a day after my birthday, and I actually think I'm gonna be picking this book up because I really did enjoy it. The story takes place in the city of Lagos, which is actually where I was born, so it was really interesting to notice all the little tidbits of culture that the author put in the book. My only problem is that the book is really short, and I feel like that length was really limiting the author. She could have done so much more with the plot, so much more with the characters. She could have really taken it home. Not that I didn't like it, I just wanted a lot more. The book does really delve into a sisterly bond type of story and I actually really liked it. Okay so now for the most recent book that I finished and I finished this yesterday and I'm still freaking out about it because I loved it so dang much. Oh, that is War Cross by Marie Lu. I picked this up on a whim. I just had it lying around from books I got from the library and I just picked it up. I was like, ah, let me read it. It's probably about like virtual reality, gaming, worlds, whatever. That's what I thought this book was about and that's what I want you to also know about this book. Go into it knowing very little. Go into it knowing it's about virtual reality, worlds, gaming, whatever, because that was enough. I ate this book up. I literally had to stay up till 4 a.m. to finish it because my body would physically not let me go to sleep because I literally had to finish the book. Like it just, it was not up for debate. I had to finish the book and I'm happy I did because I'm in love with this book and I haven't felt this giddy and this happy about a book since Six of Crows and The Female of the Species. This is definitely right up there on my favorites list. I am so in love with this book. I love it so much. Oh my god. It's kind of like Marie Lu took the chosen one trope and she like turned it upside down on its head and it's so much better than all the throne of glasses and the, the selections and the shadow and bones. Like it is just so much better. Than all of them combined. I gave this book five stars and respectively so I enjoyed it so dang much. I literally need to get my hands on what's the next one? Wild card? I need give it to me. And I want to keep this review spoiler free so I'm just gonna say that those who have read the book you'll know what I mean when I say this next thing. The only thing that made me kind of go like hmm like Hmm, is what happened like fully in the end when things happened and I just want to say I don't agree with her I agree with the other thing like I strongly agree with the other thing I don't know what she's doing agreeing with the one thing I agree with the other thing so hopefully that didn't sound as bad and as rubbish as I think it sounded if you have read this book DM me on Twitter let's talk about it because I'm shook but yeah that is it for all of my recent reads thank you so much for watching and before you go I was thinking again thinking of participating in POC a thon which is people of color a thon I want it to be my first readathon that I participate in on book two because it's just I love the thought behind it you don't have to be a person of color to participate anyway it's just shining a spotlight on on authors of color and poets of color you know science fiction writers all of that stuff so yeah I was actually thinking of participating and daily vlogging my way through it I don't know let me know if that's something you'd want to see feel free to participate in it too in fact i encourage that you participate in it as well but yes thank you so much for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one goodbye